Zhang Van Ruyen has spent 23 years growing up in South Africa and has been in Finland for over 10 years now and is honored and grateful to call themselves a citizen. They also spent seven months living in Perth, Australia, and 18 months in Stockholm, Sweden. They have traveled a fair bit, and all these places have had an indelible effect on their writing. Traveling has influenced their creativity process because it is like they have built their own personal reference library. They borrow bits and pieces from wherever they go, making notes of sensory details they would like to use in a story one day, or combining different elements together to form something new. They consider the fact of being an immigrant has colored their writing as much as knowing it's temporary and wanting to soak up as much of the experience as they can so that they don't forget it and won't ever take it for granted. The suffocating humidity of Jeju Island, the bizarre art strung across the sailing of a ruined bark in Budapest, the smell of Reykjavik, the taste of the Mediterranean, so salty, and the juxtaposition of glacier caped mountains rising out of a turquoise sea in Lofoten. All these things end up influencing the writing, sometimes only on an emotional level. For example, the way they felt flying into Iceland, seeing those black beaches and feeling like they were about to land on another planet is something they can channel into a story set in space where a character might literally be about to land on an unknown planet. Having now made Finland their home, though, has definitely changed things. They feel more entitled to write about Finnish things. The latest Arcano punk novel is set in an alternative Helsinki, drawing on Finnish mythology. For a time, they didn't want anything to do with South Africa and actively avoided writing anything with a South African flavor. This has changed a lot in the past couple of years, and they now find themselves returning to the country of their birth more and more in their writing. They have had several short stories published in the past years, and almost all of them are set in a fantastical version of South Africa. What has most influenced your literary work? The struggle of classes, cholesterol, magical realism, structuralism, the stake, or God, brown nipples, KH3, whatever that is. And it's a, it's a, a, a medicine that you give to old people to remember. Oh, jeez, I need some of that because I have an abysmal memory, like just mm -hmm. really terrible. And then the rum on the rocks. And I think my answer would have to be peanut butter because I don't think any literary work of mine would even exist without peanut butter. Like, I think I have peanut butter in my veins, or I wish I did. And maybe on a slightly more serious note, I think something that has influenced me a lot is how terrible my sense of humor is. And I really struggle with jokes and with humor in general. I don't enjoy comedy whatsoever. So this has definitely influenced my writing and um, I've tried to inject some humor in my books, but it doesn't always work. And what I find funny, very few people find funny as well. Oh my goodness, what is your most loved hate? I want to say asparagus because it's so easy to say that I hate asparagus. It's never done anything to me. It's one of the most limp vegetables, the most insipid flavors. 
you don't even notice when it exists in a dish. And I think that's why I hate it because it's just like, it's a non entity. Um, so that's the easiest thing to say that I hate. Um, that's my answer, asparagus. Do you like to drink whiskey at Angela's prayer time? Let me tell you, I spent 13 years in Catholic school and every time that bloody Angelus bell rang, I would have wished for whiskey. But obviously, A, I was underage and B, at Catholic all-girls school, so I didn't have whiskey. But nowadays, I could probably do a gin and tonic or a vodka tonic instead of a whiskey. I don't like whiskey. It all tastes like cooking oil to me. And I know there are probably people like reeling at that answer because there's all kinds of you know Scottish, Irish, blended, whatevers. They all smell the same to me. They all taste like cooking oil. So no whiskey, just vodka or gin. What is your favorite pain? I'm a little bit kinky, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, um, my favorite pain is after climbing, because I'm a pretty serious climber. And the next morning when I wake up and I feel absolutely shattered, like a broken rag doll, then I know that I put in a good session the day before. And when my, my fingers are on fire from having held on to the grips so hard, where I'm like missing skin and my fingertips are purple, that's probably my favorite kind of pain. I'm not telling you any other kind of favorite. <laughs> Do you yawn when reviewing your galley proofs or only when you check the pages or do you never yawn? <laughs> I love editing. It's one of my favorite processes in writing. I get very intimidated by a blank draft, a blank page when I'm drafting, but I love editing. But I hate reading my own work once it's finished in my mind. So by the time I get to like copy editing or proofreading, I just, you know, I want to just, I need, I need gin and tonic <laughs> and seriously, cause yeah, it's awful. Cause you get to that point where you just second guess every single word and every single sentence. And I'm the type of writer who will put a comma in and then go a paragraph down and then come back and nah, take the comma out. And then an hour later, I'll put it back in again. So yeah, much I wouldn't even say yawning, it's more like groaning and physical agony getting through the final galley proofs. I'd rather give it to someone else to do. Um, and this is the opening chapter of my new YA fantasy book that is coming out in September through Scullion. And it is super queer and uh, pretty dark because, you know, I have no sense of humor, so I write dark stuff. So here we go. This is uh, told in first person perspective from the character Rowan. So it's his chapter. My sisters danced in the waves as I bled on the shore. Their hair unspooled in the wind. Their hands lifted toward the moon, hanging like a scythe above the black ocean. They raised their voices. The spell harmonized in four parts, and I felt its pull. The ghosts within me joined in the chorus, every soul shard ululating to the bruised night and fading stars. I let them sing. I was powerless to stop them. Instead, I closed my eyes, feeling the familiar thrum of the departed within my bones as my sisters chanted in the old tongue, the language of the tamed gods from whom we claimed our power. Salt stung the wounds cut across my forearms by each of my sister's blades. Four fresh lines gouged between old scars. I knelt on the sand, turning red beneath my knees, and let the water take what it would of me. My sister's song rose in pitch and volume, their voices straining, beseeching the waves to accept this offering from my veins. Ribbons of light rippled through the foam, darting toward their naked bodies as they spun and splashed. The waves lapped hungrily at my blood, soaking my jeans, icy fingers in my skin. A final pull as if I were being dragged below by a rip current, swallowed by the sea, and my sisters gasped as one. My ghosts fell silent, spent. 
Dawn slashed its talons across the horizon, sending gold and vermilion bleeding through the shredded clouds. And, in the light, my sister's hair turned to flames, each an inferno circling a delicate face. The spell complete, they dragged their limbs made heavy with renewed power from the waves and pulled their clothes over sticky skin. I think I'll stop there. So this comes from my book, I actually should have given the title, it's called By the Blood of Rowans. And that'll come out in September. Mm-hmm.